right next to the body. This wasn't some random act of violence. This Alan Wake 2 is a modern Marvel and 2023's surprise that was 13 years in the making after the release of the original Alan Wake. It has quickly become one of my favorite games of not only 2023, but probably of all time due to a number of different factors. Remedy will be a dev that I will be closely watching due to the quality and amazing storytelling they were able to achieve. Now let's dive into our thoughts on Alan Wake 2. The following summary was taken from the official Alan Wake 2 wiki page in regards to the synopsis of the game. Saga Anderson, an FBI profiler with a reputation for solving unsolvable cases, arrives in Bright Falls to investigate a string of ritualistic murders. The case slides into a nightmare when Anderson discovers pages of a horror story, a horror story that starts to come true. Alan Wake, a lost writer trapped in a nightmare prison beyond our world, writes a dark story to shape reality in a desperate bid to escape. Hunted by an insatiable horror, Wake struggles to retain his sanity and beat the devil at his own game. Anderson and Wake are two heroes on two desperate journeys. Two separate realities are connected in ways neither of them can understand. Echoes become reflections, reflections that can reach out to each other. Trapped in a horror story where there are only victims and monsters, can they break out to be the heroes they need to be? With that being said about the summary, Alan Wake 2 is a hard, mature game with lots of violence, nudity, language, and overall very scary themes. It is the peak of survival horror, and it brings the horror aspect hard. So do realize as we review this game and have played through it, that the game is intended only for people over the age of 17. As for graphics, Alan Wake 2 is what everyone has been waiting for when it comes to a truly next-gen experience. The graphics for the game are some of the best ever made. What makes the game even better is how well the game has been optimized for both consoles and PCs alike. After the PC requirements were announced, people thought that it would be difficult to run due to a high, high requirement needed. Once released, however, people quickly realized that Remedy had gone a bit overboard on system requirements and the game actually ran quite well with much lower hardware. The high requirements even made people believe that the game would not run well on PlayStation or Xbox. However, the game on performance mode runs at a fantastic 1440p 60 frames per second while still delivering some ray tracing support. PC, however, is where Alan Wake 2 shines. Back in the 90s and 2000s, certain games like Doom and Crisis were used as a benchmark to if your PC was good enough, it would run those games. Well, Alan Wake 2 is already this generation's version of this. When played at max settings with a 4070 GPU and above, Alan Wake 2 is the best looking game that has ever been released. If you are one for experiencing absolutely beautiful games, then Alan Wake 2 is definitely the one for you. My only knock on Alan Wake 2 can be the gameplay loop, which involves mostly the same action throughout. Shine your flashlight on an enemy and then shoot him, rinse and repeat. However, where Alan Wake 2 shines is its detective and story writing gameplay for both Saga and Alan. While playing as Saga, you piece together clues and collectibles to know what to do next in Saga's mind place. While with Alan, you try new story ideas that actually change the environment that you're currently in. It is a wonderful and creative new way of doing a game like this, and it's what makes Alan Wake 2 so unique. The Medium, a game that came out last year, did something very similar with its two simultaneous worlds. But Alan Wake 2 pretty much perfects that idea with the ability to change environments instantly through its gameplay mechanics. 
I will say, while the combat itself kind of got old, the boss fights did bring some fresh new strategies and change-ups to how fighting was done. The highlight is definitely the first boss fight with Saga in the early stages of the game, as well as a musically driven fight on a beach using Saga, and a musically themed chapter that we won't spoil that does occur during the game. This storm goes out to our favorite tortured writer. This segues to one of Alan Wake's biggest strengths, its soundtrack and use of music. In between each chapter is a beautiful soundtrack solely created for the Alan Wake game. On top of that, real life band, the old gods of Asgard, truly steal the show. As I said, one of Alan's chapters in particular is probably one of the greatest sections in gaming that I have experienced in a very long time, and one that every gamer should experience either through playing or watching a gameplay experience. The creativity shown by Remedy when it comes to the soundtrack and music for this game should land it a bunch of awards coming up soon. It was so good, I regularly listen to the soundtrack on Spotify, which is available in a playlist given to us by the devs. A faded out shadow, glimpsed by some other poor bastard on his way toward the same fate. The part of Alan Wake 2 that is getting the rest of the buzz is definitely the storytelling. The back and forth between Saga and Alan is done to perfection. The ability to weave such a complex storyline really shows where Remedy excels more than any other developer out there. It puts them on the top level of gaming with the likes of Rockstar, Naughty Dog, Sony Santa Monica, and CD Projekt Red for unbelievable storytelling games. The creativity that Remedy has shown makes Alan Wake a must even if you have to watch someone else play. It wouldn't surprise me soon if the game gets turned into a movie or show because of how creative everything was. I wanted to get through the game as I became, became so invested in finding out what happened next. It was the classic page turner story that keeps you on the edge of your seat throughout. The voice acting and also motion capture really keep you involved and do not take you out of the story. The addition of side characters and cool things like the Coscula commercials and collectibles makes seeking out even more story information that much more fun. As someone who 100%ed the game with all collectibles, it truly made the experience that much better hearing more of the lore and backstory of what was actually happening. I will say that a number of side stories don't get fully finished up, and technically the game does end on a minor cliffhanger, as well as a post credit scene that truly points to a potential sequel. But with the success of the game and the accolades you better believe we will be getting in Alan Wake 3, let's hope that it comes sooner than 13 years like the second one took to make. There isn't as much in the way of replayability for the game, unfortunately. They have stated a future update that will be dropping soon here in the month of December with New Game Plus. However, this is pretty much a one and done story. Let's hope that perhaps some DLC might tide us over until a full-fledged sequel is announced. For now, Remedy have moved on to create their Control sequel, which is technically tied into the Alan Wake universe. When it comes to issues with the game, some people have reported some minor bugs and glitches, with one game-stopping bug that has since been patched. During our playthrough, we did experience one bug that did require a restart that had Alan stuck in the usual developer's cross pose and floating around the world. After a restart, we did not experience any other issues for the rest of our playthrough. Overall, Alan Wake 2 is truly a masterpiece of storytelling that shows us what next game gen games can truly be. The game is peak survivor horror that is both spooky, but also extremely fun to experience. Remedy has officially solidified itself as a top tier developer who should have any game that they release in the future be highly anticipated. In the end, we here at Crossfire Faith in Gaming give Alan Wake 2 a five out of five.